But J.P. Morgan's head of technical strategy, Jason Hunter, warns this could mark the terminal phase for the bull run. Joins me now to make that case. Good to see you again. The terminal phase, uh, why isn't this confirming that the next leg is upon us? Uh, well, if you look at the rebound we've had from the 49.85,000 target zone, that was our initial target zone uh, when you saw that March-April short-term top bill. The markets rallied from that, and clearly it's carried inertia again. These new highs aren't being confirmed by momentum. Um, so what we think we're seeing potentially is, you know, starting in March-April, that deceleration, the pullback, and now another push to a new high. Um, if the market can't sustain these highs, and the, right on top of next resistance at 53.20 to 53.50, we suspect the market will stall out there. Um, a pullback that then breaks the 50-day average again. We think you have to take that very seriously. Ultimately, the entire first half of the year, this price action we're seeing, you know, let's call it a range between 5,000 and 5,300, may turn out to be a distribution pattern. It's hard to have a lot of conviction in that until we see the price action develop and the failure from the new high. Uh, but that would set what technicians call momentum divergences on the lower frequency charts, um, the weekly time frames, the monthly time frames that are already in place. You know, that would set those signals, given the curve inversion, historically, that tends to mark the terminal phase, like we said in our note uh, earlier this week. I know, but there's like a lot of potential a maybe. I mean, I'm wondering why why wouldn't the market be able to sustain this move? There, there's a lot of suggestion that it won't be able to to handle that. Why? Well, so, you know, again, taking a big step back, looking at the cross-market contextual data, the yield curve, three-month, five-year curve has been inverted now for 18 months. If you go back to the 1960s, leave out the period of 1970s when the monetary policy was so volatile, the equity market just followed the yield curve. If you look at the 1960s and the post-1980 world, um, it was roughly an 11 to 23-month lag between curve inversion and equity market peak before you got a bear market that was associated with a recession. Like I said, we're at 18 months in now. Um, right inside that that window um, so that's where you start to look for you know problem areas like I said well we're not aggressively saying go short the market right now in fact on a near-term basis tactically until we see that deceleration as long as the S&P is above 5150 where it broke out from earlier this month it still carries bullish momentum with it we're not saying aggressively go short but if you do see that reversal unfold and then you get a break below the 50-day average you know, that's something I think you need to take very seriously given where we are in the cycle I, I understand but but if if we obsessed over the inverted yield curve for the past 18 months we would have missed the entire bull market we, we would have missed the entire thing because well, not, we've had an inverted yield curve for that long and all we have talked about is whenever you have a inverted yield curve well got to watch out going to have a recession you know don't don't be too bullish but and well, we've like taken said, out these high, we've ta taken out these higher levels and we're still talking about an inverted yield curve yeah, so it, it, it's not eight, the entire 18 month is in the window. Like I said, it's it's once you cross the 11 month in, and if you look at that that iteration when 11 months was ahead of the the market peak, that was the COVID recession. So I think you could take that away. It's really 15 months to 23 months if you look at the bulk of the recessions in that time window. You know, now that we're at 18 months, it's re you're now in that window. It wasn't the entire period sure. uh, that you look at the yield curve and say, oh, a second you go inverted, you get bearish. That's not the case. But like I said, it's now you've had monetary policy in restrictive territory for quite a while. And the pattern's the pattern. You know, historically, when you get in this window, that's when you tend to see equity markets decelerate, form distribution patterns, and, and roll over. I, I understand, but but again, I think it's important to point out. Okay, I, I, I'll give people the fact that you you don't have a recession without an inverted yield curve, but an inverted yield curve doesn't always mean you're going to have a recession, right? It doesn't. There's not one and the same. So well, to the extent, you, like you, if, could, if you, you look could at have an inverted yield curve for a long period of time and not have a recession. That, that's why this time, for a variety of reasons, I know that you get killed for saying stuff like this, that it actually could be different. Sure, it could. And if you look, the, the two times you've had the three-month, five-year curve, even marginally inverted, uh, without a recession. was The mid-1960s had an iteration where the curve barely got inverted and then immediately started to move in the other direction because the Fed eased aggressively. And the other time was the mid-1990s. Again, curve marginally inverted, and the Fed immediately started to ease aggressively and caused the steepening. You know, if the Fed throws caution to the wind and just starts easing aggressively here, sure, that changes the picture. Uh, but for, for right now, like I said, the curve's not just inverted, it's deeply inverted. It's been that way for a while. Those two times where you had that mid-cycle, you know, slow down via 
curve inversion. It was very marginal, barely went below zero, and it wasn't there for a very long period of time at all before the Fed started to move, the, you know, the narrative in the other direction. So, I mean, th those, you know, it, this time, could it be different? Sure, it could. I think that's what the market's trying to say right now. Um, and like I said, we're not aggressively short. We'll wait for the pattern to show up and the break to happen before we would suggest that aggressive bearish view um, to, to actually execute on that. Um, but for right now, it's, it's, it's something to watch very closely and be mindful of.